If you have hip osteoarthritis pain, but you're looking to reduce that pain, reduce that stiffness so you can get back to the active life that you want to, you are in the right spot because there's one thing that you might be doing that's actually flaring up your pain and that actually can be making your pain worse. And don't worry because a lot of people do this and don't realize that it's actually making that pain more severe. But the good news is, is that there's one simple fix to that, that you can start right now today during this video to help you find pain relief, reduce your stiffness, and make you feel stronger. This is especially for you if you notice that you've started to limp when you walk, you've started to notice that your balance has declined, or that you just don't feel confident on that leg. If you are brand new to this channel, welcome. My name is Alyssa. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and an osteoarthritis specialist. This channel is all about giving you the right resources to help you adventure with osteoarthritis. If you could hit that red subscribe button down below, I would really, really appreciate the support. If you're a seasoned veteran to this channel, welcome. And I cannot wait to show you this tip that you can start right now so you can start reining in that hip osteoarthritis pain. So let's get started. You have to first think about how the joint moves. So when you think about your hip, it typically moves in three directions. We move forward, it can move sideways, and then it can move backwards. And there are certain muscles that are responsible for each of those movements. Now this one thing that you might be doing unknowingly and flaring up your pain is actually strictly walking for exercise. Now hear me out. If you enjoy walking for exercise, this is by no means saying that you need to stop doing that. And this is also not saying walking is bad, but there is one thing that is missing, a vital piece that is missing if you're strictly walking for exercise. So if you think about what we just talked about, the hip joint, it moves in three directions. But when you're walking, what? how many directions do you typically move in? The answer, likely one, and that is forward. We spend a lot of time moving forward. And the reality of it is, when we're spending a lot of time in one direction, the other two directions that your hip moves in and the muscles that accompany them tend to get a little bit neglected. And when you're thinking about finding osteoarthritis pain relief in any joint, we essentially want to build up the muscle support around the joint. So that way, as stress comes through your body, the muscles help to absorb that, less stress goes to the actual joint, reducing irritation. But when we're only focusing on one part of the hip joint or one movement in the hip joint, those two other sides tend to lack that support. So what happens is we're stressing that forward part of the joint and we're not getting help from, or much help, from the muscles that move sideways and the muscles that move backwards. We don't typically move in those directions very often, which is why exercise is a great time to deliberately work on them. So we have to pull ourselves out of that walking forwards, that strictly one direction mentality and we have to start to build those other sides. So how exactly do you do that? Well, it's actually is very, very simple. And when people have, with hip osteoarthritis have tried this in the past, they've actually been surprised at one, how challenging it is to begin with, but also two, that of how good that it feels when you start to move in some of these other directions. So I'm going to show you simple ways that you can start to incorporate these specific movements into your routine. And you can even start today. Here we go. Okay, so one of the very first things to master when we're looking at figuring out the best ways to move sideways and backwards is honestly just sidestepping. Stepping side to side, I always like to think one, two, one, two. And you may need to start out in just a small range of motion. So just taking a very small step. And then you can start to increase the distance that you step once your joint gets a little bit more comfortable with it. Because you may notice a little bit of pain as you're doing this, especially starting out because your joint is like, hey, what are you doing to me? I'm not used to moving in this direction. 
I don't know if this is dangerous. And then you may notice that the pain starts to dissipate a little bit and that is totally normal. So just simply stepping side to side. Now you can make this harder by first, you can stand on one leg and then you can step sideways with the other one. And you can work on this hip being the most painful one, trying to put all your weight on that leg. And then you can also work on the range of motion by standing on maybe the leg that's not as painful or the better leg, and then stepping out to the side as far as you can. Notice most of my weight's on this side and I'm just tapping sideways. Now, another way that you can start to add in some sideways movements is to actually find a wall, keep yourself up nice and tall, and then also just take that leg out to the side. Just kind of a very simple sideways kick. One thing, which is why I like using the wall or using a kitchen counter to support you on the other side, is I don't want you to lean over too far. So we want to keep as upright as we can and just taking a small kick out to the side. So those are three sideways movements that you can get started with right away. You can add these, if you are going walking, add these before. So you can start to kind of activate some of those other muscles, start to kind of recruit some more and get used to that movement before you go out and go into that forward repetition. You can also add them at the end when you're under fatigue to really challenge those outside hip muscles because those are what are most responsible for the limp that especially if you notice after a certain distance you start to kind of get a limp that muscle is extremely important so working that under fatigue may be helpful as well but you have to go with what feels good to you we don't want to increase pain by doing too much, but we want to get the most out of walking. So the second part is the backwards part. Again, starting out really simple, making sure that you're in a clear space, but stepping backwards and then stepping forwards. And you want to alternate which leg you're leading with. Stepping back and then coming forwards. One thing again, you may need to start out just with a short step and then see if you can increase that distance a little bit and try to step back as big as you comfortably can. So if it hurts to go too far back, just stay in a range that feels good. Start to get your joint used to moving in that way and then we can make it harder from there. Another one, same thing, if you're at the wall, moving backwards. But one of the things I want you to think about, instead of just kind of kicking back and forth and trying to get, even getting some momentum moving forwards, I want you to think about taking that leg straight back, really thinking about your glute on this one. Initiate the movement with your glute, not with the momentum of swinging back and forth. Pause when you get to the hip and then really try to extend. Again, you may need to start out just in a small range of motion and then see if you can increase. One thing you want to avoid is trying to extend your back as you do this or really bending forward as you do this. You want to try to stay up nice and tall and stay in control. One of my other favorites is if you stand on one leg, so just like the sideways, stand on one leg, then you're just going to step forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. This is primarily working the leg that you're standing on, but also getting some good range of motion in that other leg. And then there are obviously lots of other exercises out there that work sideways and backwards, but these are a couple that I like to start with. And then you can add weights and you can do all kinds of stuff, but we have to master the basics first. I actually do have a YouTube video on walking backwards and the benefits of actually moving backwards. And so I'm gonna put that down here. So you can see that it's also gonna be down in the show notes below. So 
Adding in variety is huge, especially when it comes to hip osteoarthritis. We have to get our hips moving in those three ways pretty consistently to start to build some of that strength and keep that mobility, especially if you notice that it's harder to move out to the side or it's hard to move backwards. When you start to lose that range of motion, it can make things a lot harder, especially walking. If you can't take that hip back very far, when you're walking, you need that range of motion to pull through. So it's so incredibly important to be able to move sideways and backwards as well as forwards but we get a lot of repetition moving forward. So if you're walking for exercise, please add in some of these other things. I know a lot of people who start to kind of turn sideways and start walking sideways down the road or walking backwards down the road like in that video I just alluded to. Here are lots of ways that you can incorporate this. I want you to choose one or two of them. Do anywhere between one to three sets, whatever feels good to you, and then start to feel that difference. We do have to be consistent about it though. Typically it takes about a month or so of consistently at least every other day, if not every day, if you can handle that, then to see those results because they aren't gonna come immediately. So we have to be consistent. We have to show our hips some love by moving in those different directions. And that's when you can start to insert the key to start to unlock osteoarthritis pain relief. If you are looking for other ways to reduce hip osteoarthritis pain, I do have my signature online course, The Arthritis Adventure Blueprint, that's gonna take you through a step-by-step -step journey on how to unlock osteoarthritis pain, not only just through movement, but through anti-inflammatory foods, through finding what exactly is increasing your osteoarthritis pain, and it might not always be movement related. And also just giving you the hope and confidence, knowing when you're overdoing it, what type of pain is okay, and all sorts of different things. The link is down below, or you can go to arthritisadventure.com. Thanks for watching.